Good afternoon guys. I say afternoon because it's past 12 p.m. I stayed in my room a little bit doing some research and some work. I have terrible news. Unfortunately, tickets to Sagrada Familia to go in were sold out for today, for tomorrow, for, for Saturday. I won't be able to go in. So I've already done uh, Sagrada Familia on the outside. There's not really a need to go back again. So what I'm gonna do today is go to Montjuic, which is a mountain. So I can go out to the top uh, where the Olympic Stadium is for the Barcelona 1992 Summer Olympics. And I can take the cable car so I can see from Barcelona from, from the top. So I'm on my way right now. I'll see you guys there. Got here in the mountain, Montjuic. About to take a cable car. The fastest and easy way to reach Montjuic is by taking the funicular from the metro station parallel. Good news is that it's already included on the regular metro ticket, so no extra fees to ride it. Yay! Next to the funicular station, there's the cable car. And I truly recommend the ride because you can not only reach several destinations on top of the mountain, plus you can enjoy some breathtaking views of the city of Barcelona. So I just got out on the first stop. It's called the Castel. So this is the um, castle of Montjuic. So since I'm here, might as well just check it out, right? So, little change of plans. <laughs> There's a fee to go inside, which I wasn't planning on paying a fee to go inside because I wasn't planning on visiting the castle. I already have plans for today. So I thought since I was here to go inside the castle and check it out, but there's a fee to go inside. I'm just gonna go check the outside of the castle, which is pretty worth it, and then move on to the next stop. I'm up here right beside the castle of Montjuic, enjoying this great view from the marina where I can see cruise ships, the famous W Hotel by the shore there. Just gonna continue walking around and getting to know the place. Hopefully, I'll be able to see the Olympic Stadium, which is something that I really want to be looking forward to. I saw, like, I was here yesterday during the tour, but we were just driving. So the van just drove by, so I couldn't stop and actually leave the van and go take some photos, shoot some video. So, which is pretty much inside the van. So today I'm taking the opportunity to actually go and explore more in depth of the Montjuic. I'm about to take my second cable car ride. Let's go. I can't believe I got the entire car by myself. I'm in the cable car right now and it's all mine. Montjuic, which means Jewish mountain, was the birthplace of the city of Barcelona because of its strategic location at the foot of the Mediterranean Sea. I just got off of the cable car to reach the Olympic Stadium. It's gonna take me a nine minute walk. Totally doable, Mountain Montjuic. Montjuic means Mount of the Jews. Just a little FYI. Heading to the Olympic Stadium where uh, the Summer Olympics of 1992 were held. Olympic Stadium, Barcelona 92. So I just got here. This is it. The Olympic Stadium for the Olympics of 92. And this is the torch. This one. It says Barcelona 92 on it. Let's get a closer look.
So just a little history, a little about this Olympics. Its opening ceremony was back in July 25th, 1992, and it ended August 9th. There were a total of 169 nations competing and a total of 9,356 athletes in total competing in this Olympics. Its predecessor was the Summer Olympics of 1988 that um, was in Seoul, South Korea. And the next one, the one after Barcelona was uh, in Atlanta, 1996. Stopping by, got some chorizo, chorizo sandwich. Look at that. <laughs> Little visitor. Moving on, I'm gonna go take the funicular back and explore the city. It's my last full day. Let's try to soak in as much as I can. So tomorrow, on to Portugal. Going to Lisbon to meet some friends from Brazil. So I'm very excited. So for today, let's soak as much as I can from Barcelona and have some great time. seemed like I wasn't quite done here yet. I just spotted the uh, communications tower, which is right here next to the Olympic Stadium. I just came over here to check it out. It's right by the Palau San Jordi. Let's do a little 180 here. There it is, communications tower, right here. And this is the Palau San Jordi, right here. And the sound that you're listening right now, is actually to the waterfall right here, right in front of the stadium. Stadium, waterfall. So, since I gave you guys a little bit of history on the Summer Olympics of 92 here in Barcelona, I've decided to talk about this communication tower here as well. It was designed by Santiago Calatrava, hence the name Torre Calatrava or Calatrava Tower, also known as uh, Telefonica Tower. And it started its construction back in 1989 and it ended for the 1992 Olympics because this tower uh, was transmitting uh, television coverage of the Olympics. And the design, it's supposed to be an athlete holding in an Olympic flame. That was the intent of, the, uh, of Santiago Calatrava. So it's an athlete holding an Olympic flame. And this tower is 446 feet high. So there you go. A little history on the communications tower for you guys. So I'm gonna go now take my funicular down to the city and explore my last day here in Barcelona. So I just got here at Plaza España, or España Square, here in Barcelona, right at the foot of Montjuic. And this place was built in 1929 for that international exhibition here in the city and i can see here those two towers that are uh replicas from the ones in venice this one over here looks like a little coliseum with the arenas de barcelona and fira barcelona right here so i'm done with plaza España and head over to casa Bajo in la pedrera on paseo de gracia let's go check it out So I'm here in Passage de Gracia. It's a very fancy strip here in Barcelona where you can find a lot of designers and you can find Anthony Gaudi's works of art. And I'm in front of one of them right now called La Pedrera, which is this building right here. I'm gonna be walking right now and go check another of Gaudi's masterpieces called Casa Baggio. So 
so I'm standing here in front of Casa Bayo from Gaudi. I can see a familiar like design because they have the wavy lines outside, the same as the other one over there, the La Pedrera. This one has the same wavy lines from the facade. But then again, beautiful work of art from Gaudi. Look who I ran into at the train station. Ooh, hello, everybody. Miguel, what do you think if I show you like my favorite fra favorite train station in Spain? Because it's like very like antique with modern. Now we're just gonna go and check it out. All right, let's do it. It has like a very like not m like, yeah modern architecture. It was rebuilt like a bunch of times because during the civil war and before that like they had to close it but right now it's open and renewed. So Miguel, we already, I already show you La Estación Francia. Right now, I want to show you La Barceloneta. Instead of like going up first through El Passage de San Juan, we're going to take a shortcut okay. that's going to take you straight um, to La Barceloneta. Ah, and then okay. from there, we're going to walk like all the way around till here. And we're going to see like the passage. You hungry? I'm hungry. We're going to get Miguel some food. Yeah, and yeah. what do you have in mind? Maybe La Bombeta, let's see. Okay, so we just made our first stop at the Barceloneta beach and Stephanie just showed me something very interesting. It's not like the one in Paris, but we do also have a bridge with locks where people just like seal their love forever right here. So what's the history behind the bridge with locks? I don't know, one day one person put one and then some person saw it, the next one and the next one it was actually not planned. Is there any connection with this one and the one from Paris? No, there's no connection but I think the connection like was made by the tourists. Like, oh, why if Paris has one, why cannot do another thing here? So one person started everything. Thank you so much, person. <laughs> so that's... Let's continue on on uh, this promenade, the Barceloneta Beach. Yeah, for next time they come, if you guys want to like party, uh -huh. like electronic music and different kinds of things, uh -huh. here are like the main clubs, which are Opium, uh -huh. Choco, and El Pacha, which you have it in New York, Ibiza. cuando estás en, en Barcelona, España. So we just made a pit stop. We're still in the Barceloneta beach. We can see here, where is it? Oh, right there. Ahí. The famous W Hotel. El Vela. El Vela, oh, because it looks like one. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, like a, a sail. Like a sail. Well, we're just enjoying here the breeze from the, the late afternoon falling, evening coming. Look, the breeze. Yeah, the breeze, the breeze. <laughs> We're almost getting sucked into the mechanism. <laughs> and look at all the people, like here over the summer, they put the volleyball um, things, courts, and people just play beach volleyball. Mm. So what can you tell us, the viewers, myself, a little bit about the Barcelona beach, Barceloneta beach? Oh, La Barceloneta beach is just a just beach. A beach because it's like the main beach of the city. So if someone wants to go to the beach where they are in Barcelona, well, they come here? Yeah, I mean, but it's more touristy. Like, especially over the summer, there's not one single spot. Like, ah. it's all packed. So if you want to get like a better beach experience, more private, you have to go towards like outside the city. Stephanie, where are we going to go now? 
Okay, so right now we're gonna keep on walking on La Barceloneta. I'm gonna show you a little bit around. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna go to El Passage San Juan. Okay. Where it's like where they have like all the little restaurants. Mm, that's a good we'll idea. We'll see if Miguel. I find Miguel some really good tapas again. Tapas. I want to make sure I have all the tapas I can. Y las papas. Patatas. Patatas. Patatas bravísimas. Yeah, because I want to soak as much as I can from the Spanish culture because tomorrow I'm still in the uh, Iberian uh, Peninsula. Yeah, it's not Siberia. Yeah, Iberia. I... <laughs> but I'm going to go to Portugal, so it's a whole different culture, different Mira. food. El Vela! Ah. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. little bit about Stephanie and myself so I told you guys that we met in college back in 2005 four. And four? four four so yeah it's been a while yeah. and we were at the communications uh, international communications and media major together we used to make uh, TV shows for school yeah <laughs> we did the news we did um, we actually used to be like we used to vlog actually yeah yeah when nobody was be blogging yeah when there was no YouTube Miguel is gonna put um, an insert where you guys can go and check out yeah 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 you guys can go and check on the I'm gonna put on the description below the links for uh, some of our, our shows uh, that we did when it wasn't cool yeah exactly we were like we used to shoot with like uh, DV tape, just to give you an idea. <laughs> but yeah, so that's how we met, doing TV shows together. So yeah, that's a little background on ourselves. Let's continue, Barceloneta. La Barceloneta used to be like the place where all the fishermen used to live. But somehow, I don't remember exactly in what context, they just like kind of like kick them out or just like place them towards like outside of the city because they wanted to like make all this area like a very touristy area because it's actually inside the city so it's still a problem people are still asking like why they did this just for like the tourists so it's it's still an issue but well what can you do We just got here the restaurant that Stephanie recommended in Barceloneta called La Bombeta. Yeah, if you guys come here, you definitely have to come here and check it out. It's like really good and like very iconic. And she said that they already have some um, special dishes. One is La Las bo Bombas. Las Bombas. That you guys are going to see it later and they're awesome. And what else you say? It's another one? La Butifarra, La which butifarra. is another um, Catalan dish. Looking forward to it. Like, just think about las patatas bravas in one big bomb. 
And also, I want you, Miguel, and all of you to try la esquechada de bacalao, which is like a very fresh salad with um, they call bacalao in England. Codfish. Codfish. And um, we're also going to eat la butifarra con judías. Vamos a pedir unas bombas. Una esquechada de bacalao, una butifarra con judías. You didn't try the pan tumaca. The tumaca is um, tomato in Catalan. It's like a bread with... We should order it. You have to try it. We're gonna try it and I'm gonna tell you guys the story behind it. It is really good. Alright, so we got our first dish and it's called bombas or bombs. And you cannot find it anywhere but here at La Bombeta. Let's go for it. Bombastic. Bombastic. <laughs> it's so good. The sauce on the top, it's spicy. My mouth right now is on fire. But the potato is very creamy. So, very good. Right now we have el pan of tomaca, which is bread with tomato. It's actually one of like the iconic dishes of the Mediterranean diet. It came from like when they they were like before Asian history, the plantations of tomato, and there was like a bunch of tomato that they, they didn't know what to do with it. They came up with the idea to get the, uh, the bread has to be like all like hard when the bread is like already hard. They grab a tomato, one person grab a tomato, and he started to like rub it uh, to make the bread soft again. So that's like the origin of it, and it's one of like the main things that people eat here. It's tomato with um, olive oil and um, garlic. So now this is our third dish and it's called Esquechada de Bacala, which means a fresh salad with olives, tomatoes, peppers, uh, onions, and fresh codfish. This is one of the main dishes of the Catalonian re uh, region. Let's try it. Now this is our final dish, butifarra con judías, which is um, like a special sausage from Catalonia with beans. It's actually really, really good. And Miguel, and all of you, this is for you. Or if they had Wi-Fi and I told you no. Well, look at the check. I bet you guys have never seen this before. Analog, completely. All right, so we just finished dinner and Barcelona is over. Tomorrow I'm on my way to Lisbon. Stephanie and I were gonna part ways. It was great seeing Stephanie. Like we haven't seen each other since 2008. So we were reminiscing, remembering great times. But it, it felt like time never like Pass. passed by. It's yeah. good. Yeah, we were, that's how you know that we're really good friends. Yeah, like we remembered a lot of stuff. Like we, it was yesterday. We had some, yeah, we had some very good laughs. Let's just say that. Mm. Very good laughs. So. Mm. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you too. Catch you guys later. Say bye, Stephanie. Bye, Stephanie.